but um, yeah, I wouldn't know how to land it. I wasn't really planning on landing it. I know how to fly one of those aircraft, but uh, we'll see what we can do and get you in contact with somebody. Uh, hold on. Ah, shoot. Man, I'm sorry about this. I hope this doesn't ruin your day. Hello, 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 sweet baby angels and pumpkin heads. It is your girl, Miss Tetra Resin Stone, and today we are slicing into the sky god, Richard Russell. Bebo, as his friends and family knew him, was a 29-year-old Horizon Ground Service agent. For nearly four years, Russell handled baggage, tighted, and de-iced planes. Bebo was funny, attractive, and loved by all who knew him. His larger-than-life personality sparked many around the world to pay tribute to this fallen star. He ultimately stole a Bombardier Dash A Q400 from Seattle Tacoma International Airport. Russell took control of the Q400 on August 10th, 2018, while working alone. At 7.15 p.m., he arrived in a tow vehicle to the cargo area at the far north end of SeaTac's airfield. He climbed aboard the Horizon Air Q400. Four minutes later, Russell began the sequence to start the aircraft. At 7.22 p.m., causing its propellers to start turning. Over the next few minutes, Russell exited the plane and used the tow vehicle to turn the nose toward the airfield. He then pulled it away from its parked location at 7.32 p.m., with the aircraft taking off one minute later from runway 16 Charlie. For the next hour and 13 minutes, Russell piloted the plane, at times pulling off several aerobatic stunts during the unauthorized flight, before crashing to the woods on the island of South Puget Sound at 8.46 p.m. During a rambling, recorded conversation with ground control during the flight, Russell described himself as a man in crisis, but also calmly chatted about the Mount Rainer's beauty. Okay, and, uh, and you can see all the terrain around you. Uh, you've got no issue with visibility or anything? No, nah, everything's peachy. Peachy clean. Just did a little circle around Rainier. It's beautiful. And how to find the orca that for days had garnered national attention while carrying its dead calf in Puget Sound. Hey, I want the coordinates of that orca with the, you know, the mama orca with the baby. I want to go see that guy. The flight shut down airport traffic, prompting two F-15 fighter jets in Portland to break the sound barrier while scrambling to the scene and drew dozens of witnesses to call 911. It also left pilots and other aviation experts speculating as to how Russell, a low-paid ground service employee with no apparent pilot experience, knew how to fly the 76-seat passenger turboprop plane and pull off the aerial maneuvers. The investigation didn't find that Russell had received any formal flight training. However, investigators learned that Russell was familiar with the checklist of actions for starting the airplane. According to the FBI's statement, investigators were also aware of internet searches Russell performed for flight instructional videos. Investigators did not uncover any conclusive evidence to suggest further informal flight training. As a ramp agent, Russell was a properly credentialed employee of Horizon Air and did not appear to have violated any security measures or protocols until the theft of the plane. The FBI found as a part of his responsibility as a ground crew member, Russell had knowledge regarding the operations of the aircraft's auxiliary power unit and familiarity with tow equipment and maneuvering. At times, he shared complaints with colleagues about their grueling work and low pay. Perhaps this was the reason for Russell's actions on August 10, 2018. Despite conversations with air traffic control, an official motive was never given. Russell's flight ended with no casualties on the ground. As a part of the investigation, the FBI said it considered information from the National Transportation Safety Board's review of the aircraft's flight data recorder that indicated significant slight slip of the airplane during the final minutes of flight. Still, the airplane appears to have remained in control in the final descent. The FBI concluded if the pilot had wanted to avoid impact with the ground, he had time and energy to pull the column back, raise the nose, and initiate a climb. Instead, the column remained in a position forward of neutral and moved further forward about six seconds prior to the flight data recorder's ending at the time of the crash, investigators found. 
If the aircraft's cockpit voice recorder did not capture any significant sounds beyond Russell's discussions with ground control personnel, Russell made no phone calls or did anything outside of what was recorded. In the end, Richard Russell was remembered as a loving, funny, likable guy, not as a disgruntled employee who became a criminal stealing a multi-million dollar aircraft before deliberately crashing it into the ground. Horizon Air CEO Gary Beck stated the aerial maneuvers were incredible and that he did not know how Russell achieved the experience that he did. During his conversation with air traffic control, Russell said he knew what he was doing a little bit because he had experience playing video games. He just needs some help controlling his aircraft. Very good. Nah, I, mean, I don't need that much help. I played some video games before. Shortly after the incident, observers of the internet forums began referring to Russell as Sky King as a tribute to his ability at flying the aircraft, as well as his actions during the incident. Russell's family released a statement on August 11th stating they were stunned and heartbroken and devastated by the events. On behalf of the family, we are stunned and heartbroken. It may seem difficult for those watching at home to believe, but Bebo was a warm, compassionate man. It is impossible to encompass who he was in a press release. He was a faithful husband, a loving son, and a good friend. A childhood friend remarked that Bebo was loved by everyone because he was kind and gentle to each person he met. This is a complete shock to us. We are devastated by these events, and Jesus is truly the only one holding this family together right now. As the voice recordings show, Bebo's intent was not to harm anyone. He was right in saying that there are so many people who have loved him. We would like to thank the authorities who have been both helpful and respectful. Alaska Air for their resources, the community, his friends and his family for their incredible support and compassion. We'd also like to thank the media for their sensitivity and acknowledging this as the only statement that will be released by the family. One year after the crash, authorities made changes in hopes to prevent something like this ever happening again. The airport authorities were given a two-phase plan. 32 recommendations were given during phase one, 24 of which had been implemented by 2019, most of them secret, known as security sensitive. In the end, Bebo's actions has in some way made the skies safer. According to Lance Little, the airport's managing director, Actions implemented to ensure something like this never happens again includes more security cameras. There were cameras at the remote area at the northeast corner of the airport known as Cargo 1 during the theft. But the airport says it has added more cameras around the airfield, including new ones that can be seen at Cargo 1. And any blind spots are now covered, says Little. More frequent patrols. These patrols are made by ramp patrol personnel who monitor the airfield for everything, from debris on the runway to birds and other wildlife. Other security teams patrol the fence lines and other places where people can get in. Since the night of the theft, patrols have been increased. Badging and identifications. The airport has had badges that allow certain employees in certain places, but now the badging is getting more restrictive to more specific areas. This change is still in development. SeaTac is also training employees to monitor each other and challenge people who may show up in areas their badge does not permit them to be in. Restrictions on working alone. Richard Russell was by himself with the plane he took, allowing him to get in, start the jet, turn it around with the tug, then begin taxiing out onto the airfield and taking off. Generally speaking, the airport is responsible for the airfield and other facilities, but the airlines responsible for the airplanes themselves. By working collaboratively, along with input from the TSA and FFA, Little said no employees is allowed to move an airplane by themselves anymore. This story really had me torn. I wanted to cover this, I wanted to bring this to you guys, but I wanted to talk about it in a respectful way as I try to do with all of the topics that I talk about. And at the end of the day, what happened was extremely tragic and heartbreaking. And I think what really tore me is the fact that Richard Russell had so many fans out of this. And it's kind of tough because it's almost like you glorify a criminal or to glorify, you know, somebody who hijacked an aircraft. How, how can you do that? But when you get to see 
the glimpse of who this guy was. It's easy to understand how people were willing and able to find that soft spot for the man that he was. And I was able to see through combing through the audio recordings through air traffic control with Russell, it was very clear that he was the likable guy, right? He's the guy's guy. He's the type of guy that you want to have a beer with. He's the type of guy you want to play some Call of Duty with. He's the type of guy that you were able to just get along with. And it's clear that that's who he was. And so it really does make it hard when we talk about something so awful and illegal because we want to think about people in their best. What I really wanted to point out is, is that mental health doesn't have a standard look. You know, what does mental health look like? For all intents purposes, everyone who knew Richard said he was larger than life. He was funny. He was engaging. He was a joy to be around. He brought light to everyone who knew him. And it was hard for the people around him to imagine that a person that makes them feel so good could potentially be in a place so low and so dark. And I think that's important. A lot of times we can overlook someone because what they mean to us doesn't necessarily reflect how they think of themselves. And so in the end, it's is very, very heartbreaking. It's very, very tragic. And it goes to show you that you never know somebody, right? In addition, I really want to point out, I've made the sentiment before and I'm, I'm going to make it here again. The saddest thing ever is that Richard was at a place where he believed that suicide was the only way out. Out. And I, for one, am a person who knows from firsthand experience that you never make a permanent decision based on temporary feelings. And sometimes we think that we are at the lowest of lows and there is no way out and there is nothing to look forward to. And then we get over that low point in our lives and we feel like we're soaring on top of the world. So it's really, really heartbreaking and sad that he, unfortunate that people around him didn't recognize that he was hurting. I'm sure there were signs, maybe subtle signs, but I'm sure there were signs. And at the end of the day, we have to take personal responsibility for our actions and for our own mental health. If you know you feel that you are at a place in your life where you just feel like you cannot go on, reach out to someone who is a medical professional who can help you get through it. Things always get better. They really do. And I wish that Richard would have sought help because he seems like such an amazing person. And it truly is a heartbreaking story when we look at who he was and what he meant to his family and to his friends and his colleagues. All in all, I hope you guys enjoy the story of Richard Russell, Bebo as his friends knew him, the Sky King as the internet come to know him. Please like, subscribe, comment, check me out on all social medias. I can be found at Tetra underscore Resinstone on Instagram and T Resinstone on Twitter. Subscribe and like. I will see you guys in my next video as always. Bye-bye.